Welcome to Spaceverse, your portal to cosmic adventures. NASA's twin Voyager probes, launched in 1977, have captivated the world with their groundbreaking journeys to the outer planets. These missions took us on a grand tour of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, providing unprecedented close-up images and scientific data that transformed our understanding of these distant worlds. Now, 45 years later, both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 continue their voyage into the uncharted territory of interstellar space, pushing the boundaries of human knowledge even further. The Voyager missions were designed to take advantage of a rare planetary alignment, allowing the spacecraft to slingshot from one planet to the next using gravitational assists. This clever navigation technique enabled the probes to reach their destinations more quickly and with less fuel. As a result, the Voyagers provided humanity with its first detailed look at the gas giants and their moons, revealing active volcanoes on Jupiter's moon Io, the intricate rings of Saturn, the tilted, icy world of Uranus, and the dynamic atmosphere of Neptune. Despite being launched in the late 1970s, the Voyager probes have continued to send valuable data back to Earth thanks to their robust engineering and the dedication of the mission team. The spacecraft are equipped with instruments that, while primitive by today's standards, have proven to be remarkably resilient and capable. For instance, the Voyagers carry around 3 million times less memory than modern cell phones, and their data transmission rate is about 38,000 times slower than a 5G internet connection. Data is stored on 8-track tape recorders, a technology that has long since become obsolete. Yet, the information gathered by these instruments has been indispensable in advancing our understanding of the outer solar system and beyond. The scientific legacy of the Voyager missions is profound. Researchers, many of whom were not even born when the probes were launched, continue to analyze the data sent back by the spacecraft. This information has helped to unravel numerous mysteries about the heliosphere, the vast bubble-like region of space dominated by the solar wind and magnetic field of the sun. As the Voyagers travel further into interstellar space, they provide critical insights into the nature of this boundary and the transition to the interstellar medium. In many ways, the Voyager spacecraft have become time capsules of their era. They represent the pinnacle of 1970s technology, embodying the spirit of exploration and the drive to push beyond the known frontier. Their continued operation is a testament to the ingenuity and foresight of the engineers and scientists who designed and built them. But what are the Voyagers doing now? Both probes are currently exploring the outer edges of the heliosphere, where the influence of the sun gives way to the interstellar medium. Voyager 1, which is the most distant human-made object from Earth, crossed into interstellar space in 2012, followed by Voyager 2 in 2018. These milestones marked humanity's first steps into the space between the stars. As they journey further, the Voyagers are expected to encounter the interstellar medium, providing a wealth of information about this largely unexplored region. Looking to the future, the Voyagers will continue to send back data for as long as their power sources allow. Their radioisotope thermoelectric generators are gradually losing power, and mission engineers are carefully managing the spacecraft's resources to extend their operational lives as long as possible. Even after the probes can no longer send data, they will continue to drift through the galaxy, silent ambassadors of human curiosity and exploration. So, what lies ahead for the Voyager spacecraft? What will they encounter next in their epic journey? Join us as we delve into the latest discoveries and future prospects of these extraordinary missions, continuing the story of exploration that began over four decades ago. Two of the most remarkable spacecraft ever launched might never have left the ground if not for a rare cosmic alignment. In this case, the four largest planets in our solar system provided the perfect opportunity. This alignment allowed a spacecraft to gain speed from the gravitational pull of each giant planet it passed, like being propelled by an invisible rope that then snapped, flinging the probe on its journey. The catch? This alignment only happens once every 176 years. To take advantage of this unique opportunity, a spacecraft needed to be launched by the mid-1970s. NASA seized this chance by designing two spacecraft specifically for this mission. Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, identical in design, were launched just 15 days apart in the summer of 1977. For nearly 45 years, these spacecraft have been journeying through space, sending valuable data back to Earth every day from the far reaches of our solar system. They have traveled further and lasted longer than any other spacecraft in history. 
According to our current understanding, they have crossed into interstellar space, becoming the first human-made objects to do so, a distinction they will hold for many decades. This impressive record is even more remarkable considering the Voyager missions were originally intended to last only four years. The Voyager spacecraft's early observations of Jupiter's and Saturn's moons, delivered to astonished researchers four decades ago, unveiled active volcanoes and fractured ice fields on worlds previously thought to be as inactive and cratered as our moon. In 1986, Voyager 2 became the first spacecraft to fly by Uranus, and three years later it visited Neptune, making it the only spacecraft to have explored these distant planets. Today, over 12 billion miles from Earth, these pioneering interstellar probes continue to amaze physicists with unexpected discoveries about the uncharted regions of space. However, their extraordinary journey is nearing its end. Over the past three years, NASA has shut down heaters and other non-essential systems to conserve the spacecraft's energy, extending their mission's life until approximately 2030. For the scientists involved with the Voyagers, many of whom have been part of the mission since its inception, this is a bittersweet moment. They are witnessing the conclusion of a project that has far surpassed their highest expectations. Voyager 1 reached Jupiter 546 days after its launch in March 1979, while Voyager 2, on a different trajectory, arrived in July of the same year. Both spacecraft were designed as stable platforms for their Viticon cameras, which used red, green, and blue filters to produce full-color images. With a rotational speed more than 15 times slower than a clock's hour hand, the spacecraft barely spun, minimizing the risk of visual blur. Even when they were still three to four months away from Jupiter, the Voyagers began transmitting the first images of the planet, thrilling the packed audiences at JPL. The appearance of Io in color was a complete surprise. Prior to the Voyager missions, it was assumed that all moons in the solar system would be similar, dull, and cratered. The incredible variety of moonscapes discovered by the Voyagers around Jupiter and Saturn was entirely unexpected. When the Voyagers were about a million miles away from Jupiter, the first hint of the diversity of moons came from the Low Energy Charged Particle Detection System, which picked up some unusual signals. Voyager's cameras later revealed that Io had active volcanoes. This small moon, slightly larger than Earth's moon, is now known to be the most volcanically active body in the solar system. The materials ejected by Io's volcanoes contribute to its vibrant colors and the strange ions detected by the LCP. Pele, the largest of Io's volcanoes, has produced plumes 30 times higher than Mount Everest, and its ash field is almost the size of France. The Voyager spacecraft captured over 33,000 images of Jupiter and its moons, each one revealing new and unexpected details. Among the discoveries were Jupiter's rings and Europa's icy surface, which appeared cracked and is now believed to be over 60 miles thick. As the spacecraft left the Jupiter system, they received a gravity assist, accelerating them by 35,700 miles per hour. This crucial boost enabled them to escape the Sun's gravitational pull and continue their journey toward other stars. At Saturn, the Voyager missions diverged. Voyager 1 flew by Titan, a moon shrouded in orange haze, and then turned north away from the plane of the planets. Voyager 2, after navigating through Saturn's rings and enduring hundreds of impacts from dust particles, continued alone to Uranus and Neptune. In 1986, Voyager 2 discovered 10 new moons around Uranus, adding to the planet's growing count of ring satellites. Three years later, it flew approximately 2,980 miles above Neptune's blue methane atmosphere and recorded the fastest wind speeds ever observed on a planet, reaching up to 1,000 miles per hour. Voyager 2 also found Triton, Neptune's largest moon, to be one of the coldest places in the solar system, with surface temperatures around negative 391 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 235 degrees Celsius. Ice volcanoes on Triton were seen ejecting nitrogen gas and dust particles five miles into the moon's thin atmosphere. If it weren't for Carl Sagan, an astronomer and member of the mission's imaging team, Voyager 2's pictures of Neptune and its moons would have been the last images ever taken by either spacecraft. NASA initially planned to turn off the cameras on both Voyagers once the Grand Tour was officially over, expecting no further photo opportunities beyond Neptune, just the endless void and distant stars. Even though the mission was extended with hopes of reaching interstellar space, now called the Voyager Interstellar Mission, Sagan persuaded NASA leaders to have Voyager 1 capture one last series of photos. 
As a result, on Valentine's Day in 1990, the probe pointed its cameras back toward the inner solar system and took 60 final pictures. The most captivating of these images, dubbed the Pale Blue Dot by Sagan, shows Earth from 3.8 billion miles away. In this photo, Earth is barely visible, a tiny speck hidden in the reflected sunlight off the camera's optics, occupying less than a single pixel. Currently, both voyagers are so far from Earth that a one-way radio signal traveling at the speed of light takes almost 22 hours to reach Voyager 1 and just over 18 hours to catch up with Voyager 2. They move forward by 3 to 4 light seconds every day. Their only link to Earth is through the NASA Deep Space Network, a trio of tracking facilities spread across the globe, ensuring continuous communication with the spacecraft as the Earth rotates. As the Voyagers travel further away, their signals grow fainter. The world is filled with noise from radios, televisions, cell phones, and other devices, making it increasingly challenging to hear the faint transmissions from the spacecraft. Despite the faintness, these signals have significantly altered what astronomers anticipated discovering as the Voyagers enter the interstellar phase of their journey. It's important to distinguish between the limits of the solar system and the boundary of interstellar space. The Oort cloud, a distant collection of comet-like objects bound by the sun's gravity, extends halfway to the nearest star. It'll take the Voyagers at least another 300 years to reach its inner edge. However, interstellar space is much closer. It begins where the influence of the solar wind ends. The solar wind is a continuous stream of charged particles and magnetic fields emitted by the sun, expanding outward like an inflating balloon to form the heliosphere. This heliosphere carries the sun's magnetic field into space until it is halted by the pressure of interstellar matter, creating a boundary known as the heliopause, preceded by a massive shock front called the termination shock. The heliopause marks the border between our solar system and interstellar space, and before the Voyager missions, estimates of its distance varied greatly. As Gurnett noted, many early estimates were essentially guesses. One early estimate placed the heliopause as close as Jupiter, while Gurney's 1993 calculations suggested it was about 25 times farther, between 116 and 177 astronomical units, with 1 AU being the distance from Earth to the Sun, or 93 million miles. Gurney's projections proved accurate, as it took nearly 20 years for one of the voyagers to reach the heliopause. Voyager 1 detected the expected rise in plasma density with its plasma wave detector, showing an 80-fold increase, but it did not detect a change in the ambient magnetic field's direction. This was surprising because a change in the magnetic field direction was expected when transitioning from the Sun's influence to that of interstellar space. This unexpected result challenged prior assumptions and highlighted the complexities of the boundary region. In November 2018, Voyager 2 reached the interstellar boundary, but it did not detect any changes in the magnetic field. When the spacecraft arrived at the heliopause 120AU from Earth, the same distance its twin had reached six years earlier, it presented another puzzle. Theoretical models had predicted that the heliosphere should fluctuate in sync with the Sun's 11-year cycle. However, this prediction did not match the observations. The solar wind, which ebbs and flows, was at its strongest when Voyager 2 arrived, suggesting the heliopause should have been farther out than 120 AU if the models were correct. Voyager data is prompting theorists to develop more complex models of the interaction between the heliosphere and interstellar environments. The prevailing theory is that our sun has moved from a hot, ionized region of the galaxy into a patchy, partially ionized area. This hot zone likely formed from a supernova, an ancient star, or possibly several, that exploded and heated the surrounding area, stripping electrons from nearby atoms. The boundary around this region can be conceptualized like a seaside, with turbulent water and waves mixing together. In this chaotic area, magnetic fields twist and turn, differing significantly from the smooth magnetic fields typically depicted in theoretical models. The Voyager data reveal many small-scale changes near the heliopause, but minimal large-scale field variations, indicating the heliosphere's influence on the interstellar medium. As the spacecraft continue their journey, it is expected that they will eventually move beyond these turbulent regions and encounter the undisturbed interstellar magnetic field. Saying goodbye to these innovative spacecraft won't be easy. It's always hard to see the end of something so remarkable. Currently, Voyager 2 has five operational instruments, and Voyager 1 has four. 
They are powered by a system that converts heat from the radioactive decay of plutonium into electricity. However, with the power output decreasing by about 4 watts each year, NASA has had to prioritize which instruments to keep running. Even when the Voyagers fall silent, their journeys will continue. Voyager 1 will pass Proxima Centauri, our closest neighboring star, in 16,700 years, and Voyager 2 will follow 3,600 years later. After that, they will spend millions of years orbiting the galaxy, long after our sun has burned out and the heliosphere has vanished. They will still be out there, largely undamaged, carrying a message that might someday be received, not by humans, but perhaps by another form of life. This message is stored on two recordings, a type of technology from another era, but not your typical plastic discs. These are made of copper, coated in gold and enclosed in aluminum. Known as the Golden Records, their grooves encode images and sounds meant to provide a sense of the world the Voyagers came from. The records contain 90 minutes of music, including Bach's Brandenburg Concerto No. 2 and Chuck Berry's Johnny B. Good, along with images of children, dolphins, dancers, sunsets, and sounds like crickets, rain, and a mother kissing her child. There is also a message from Jimmy Carter, who was President of the United States when the Voyagers were launched. We cast this message into the cosmos. It reads in part. We hope someday, having solved the problems we face, to join a community of galactic civilizations. This record represents our hope, determination, and our goodwill in a vast and awesome universe. And that's it. Thank you for joining us on this cosmic journey through another episode of Spaceverse. We hope you enjoyed our exploration of the mysteries and marvels of the universe. As we continue to dive into the wonders of space, make sure to stay tuned for more thrilling content and groundbreaking discoveries. Until next time, keep looking up and stay curious. The universe is vast and full of wonders, and we're excited to explore it with you. Thanks for watching.